The Kepler telescope was built for the very specific purpose of detecting exoplanets in our galaxy. Exoplanets are celestial bodies orbiting stars outside our solar system. We humans still hope to find planets somewhere in space that resemble our Earth and may even be inhabited. For nine years, Kepler scanned a section of space located in the constellation Swan. There, researchers found particularly many indications of exoplanets. The Kepler telescope was a technical milestone. Detecting comparatively dark and tiny planets millions of miles away is no simple task. Nevertheless, Kepler has found more than 5,000. The Kepler Telescope in 2009, the Kepler Space Telescope was launched into space as part of NASA's Discovery Program. To catch as much of the tiny planets as possible, the telescope was equipped with the largest primary observation mirror at the time. Kepler has since been surpassed only by the James Webb Space Telescope, which this year embarked on Kepler's follow-up mission, among others. Kepler's 96-megapixel camera was capable of detecting, measuring, and imaging minute shifts in starlight. So far, exoplanets can only be detected when they affect the light patterns and orbits of their star in typical patterns, or when they pass directly in front of their star during a transit. When you consider that transits happen in periods ranging from a few days to several hundred years, depending on the size of the planet, its orbital velocity, and its distance from its star, you can imagine the challenge of detecting planets in other solar systems. What was the goal of the Kepler mission? The goal of the Kepler mission was clearly to find possible Earth-like planets. We humans would be all too glad to know whether we are alone in this gigantic universe. The only possibilities where other civilizations can reside are exoplanets. Within our solar system, we gave up the search for aliens long ago. Of course, it is not enough that theoretically there are planets out there. These worlds must meet certain requirements to make organic life possible. To do this, of course, we want to know if there would be an Earth 2 out there somewhere, in case our home planet becomes uninhabitable at some point. Although there were a few glitches at the beginning and some of the technology failed, Kepler was able to examine 530,536 stars and star systems during its operational lifetime and reliably prove the existence of more than 5,000 exoplanets. But by no means all of these planets resemble our Earth. Life-Friendly Planets The first step in the search for exoplanets are the life-friendly planets. These are located within the habitable zone of their stars. Such planets are close enough to their stars to get enough light and heat. And according to our state of science, this is one of the basic requirements for organic life. For stars larger than our sun or hotter, the habitable zone is at quite different distances than, for example, red dwarfs, which are among the most luminous stars in space. This fact alone has already significantly shrunk the candidates of possible habitable planets. However, the classification life-friendly does not make a new Earth. Rather, it represents a first selection. Thus, researchers found within habitable zones remarkably many rocky planets, which have a bound orbit similar to our moon. This means that they always face their stars on the same side and are thus bright and warm on one side, but dark and very cold on the other. Moreover, such worlds have no rhythms comparable to our days or seasons. Whether on the sun side or in the edge zones of these planets, life would be theoretically possible is so far unclear. Clearly hostile to life are, for example, planets like Kelt 9b, which is so hot that its atmosphere is constantly melting. The darkest planet known so far is named Trace 2b and has an atmospheric temperature of almost 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. The carbonaceous rocky planet orbits its star in an orbit so close that life would not be possible there. At the other end of the inhospitable spectrum is GJ433d, which resembles Neptune and is the coldest exoplanet known to date. In addition to these shower worlds, however, researchers have also found several planets that look remarkably like our Earth. Earth-like planets. 
To determine Earth resemblance, astronomers evaluated Kepler data such as the size, mass, density, orbit, and evidence for the presence of an atmosphere. Other criteria included the planet's rotation, the presence of seasons, plate tectonics, and geologic activity. Earth similarity is described internationally using the Earth Similarity Index, or ESI for short. There are currently 219 known Earth-like planets, 10 of which could be roughly the same size and temperature as Earth. At best, of course, we could tell from Earth whether these planets have liquid water. Kepler could not yet do that. In contrast, the James Webb Space Telescope, which began operations this year, can detect traces of water on or around exoplanets using ultra-fine measurement sensors. The Most Earth-like Planet Currently, the most Earth-like planet is Teegarden star B with an ESI of 0.95. Teegarden B is located in the zodiac sign Aries, is 12 light-years away from Earth, slightly larger than our home, and otherwise very likely almost identical in terms of surface composition, atmosphere, and light conditions. For their parts, TOI 700D, Kepler 1649C, and TRAPPIST 1D achieve an ESI of 0.9. TOI 700D is 20% larger than Earth, according to NASA data, and takes 37 days to orbit its star once. Despite these differences, TOI 700D bears striking similarities to Earth. For example, the planet receives about 86% of the energy that our Sun provides to Earth. The surface temperature and atmosphere could be very similar to Earth. Kepler 1649C is located 300 light-years from Earth, and arrives at its ESI based on size and estimated surface areas. The planet is 1.06 times larger than our home and receives 75% of starlight. TRAPPIST-1D is probably a rocky exoplanet orbiting the dwarf star TRAPPIST-1 just outside the habitable zone. Nevertheless, the planet resembles Earth in size and density. However, this candidate has a crucial drawback despite its computational similarities to Earth. It too has a bound orbit and thus a dark and cold side, and a bright and perhaps life-friendly side. Super Inhabitable The last stage in the search for new worlds in space is the category of super inhabitable planets. In the jargon of exoplanet hunters, these would be worlds even more suitable than Earth for organic life, and perhaps as alternate worlds for humans. Imagine the perfect climate environment, and paradisiacal living conditions, and you would be on a super-inhabitable exoplanet. According to science, such perfect worlds are in orbit around a K dwarf star. These stars are relatively small and slightly cooler than our Sun, which is a yellow dwarf. The perfect exoplanet would be about 5 to 8 billion years old, time enough to support complex life. In addition, the superworld would be about 10% larger than Earth about 40 degrees Fahrenheit warmer on average, and have an atmosphere composed of 25% to 30% oxygen. Of course, this world would also have plate tectonics, with scattered land and water areas, and similar geological processes. To provide for tides, seasonal changes, and a stable orbit, there would need to be a moon between 1% and 10% the size of Earth's moon. Currently, there are about 24 planets that could be such superworlds. These include Kepler 1126b, Kepler 69c, and KOI 5715.01, which is about 1. times larger than Earth and about 3,000 light years away. However, since it's not yet possible to calculate the land mass of distant exoplanets, the assumptions must remain vague at this time. Of course, it would be nice to simply travel to these worlds or send a probe, but whether that will ever be possible is another big question for humanity. What lies beyond our solar system? The Voyager probe, launched in 1977, took over 30 years to leave our solar system and enter interstellar space. No human-made object has ever come this far. Beyond the borders of our solar system, millions of miles of empty space follow before another celestial body comes into view. After a little more than four light years, a spaceship would come across our nearest cosmic neighbor, the Alpha Centauri Solar System. 
one light year is 5.88 trillion miles. Even if we could build a spaceship capable of traveling that distance, humans would need centuries to cover it. Nevertheless, researchers are not giving up hope. After all, it would be conceivable to make contact with other worlds via probes or radio technology. Although Kepler's operations officially ended in 2018, researchers are still evaluating the data collected today. In the process, they keep coming across new discoveries. Kepler's ultra-fine microlensing technology has allowed it to spot exoplanets that lie outside the bright and habitable zones of their stars. In this way, astronomers found a planet in 2022 that resembles our Jupiter almost one to one. This fascinates researchers because no two celestial bodies, planets, suns, or moons have yet been found in space that are exactly identical. The Jupiter twin is located at a distance of about 17,000 light years from Earth and orbits a star that also resembles our Sun. And Earth, too, has not yet been found in this system, but it cannot be excluded completely. It remains to be seen what data and images the James Webb mission or other space telescopes will provide us in the coming years. Finally, tell us how you liked the video and comment with what your personal superworld would look like.